We know that if our function f is analytic in a simply connected domain, the integral along a simple closed contour will be zero. But what happens if we have holes in our domain? That happens, for example, when we make holes around singularities in order to make f analytic in the remaining part of our domain. Well, in that case, we have a so-called multiply connected domain. Our contour integral will then be the sum of the contour integrals around the holes. This result will also lead to a very nice consequence, the deformation of paths. We will learn all about this in this video. So let's take an example. We have our contour C that sur surrounds some holes given by C1, C2, C2, C3 up to Cn. In this picture I drew only the first C1 and the last one Cn. So what do we do? Well, we also add L1, L2, L3 up to Ln. And now we do the following. We start somewhere going counterclockwise along C. Then we go in along L1. Then we go clockwise along C1. And then we go back along L1. And then we continue along C. And continue, continue until we are at the last one. We go in along Ln, we go clockwise along Cn, so we are here, we continue, then we go back along Ln, and we continue our journey until we are back at where we started. So we have a, a simple close contour as a sum. So our C total will be a combination of a lot of contours of C, uh, which goes counterclockwise, the C1 going clockwise, C2 going clockwise, etc., until Cn going clockwise, and then we have con uh, uh, contributions of L1 and minus L1, because we go in and out via L1, etc., for all of them. And then we know, uh, to summa so summarizing, uh, C simple closed contour, we go counterclockwise once, uh, CK are uh, simple closed contours as well, they are all inside and disjoint, we go clockwise along those. And uh, if you say that the other points, uh, on the interior to C, but exterior to the CK, so the D points are over here, like this. Now, if F is analytic uh, on D, then we know that our total uh, contour integral will be zero, so it will be the total contour integral, so it will be the, con the integral along C, uh, going counterclockwise, plus uh, the contributions along all the holes which uh, are uh, where the contours are now traversed clockwise. So that sum equals zero because the contributions uh, of L1 and minus L1 will cancel out. So how does this help us? Well, if you have, for example, a domain with one hole, uh, like we have over here, uh, then you know that the integral along the C1 going counterclockwise plus the integral along C2 going clockwise equals zero. It's a straightforward application of this formula over here. But that means that you can put the integral along C2 to the other side. The integral along C1 counterclockwise equals the integral along uh, minus C2. So C2 went clockwise, so the integral along minus C2 will be counterclockwise. So integral along C1 counterclock equals integral along C2 clock counterclock. Uh, so you can deform your path as long as your function is analytic in between your contours. So if you have an uh, integral along a certain contour, and your function is analytic in a, lo a lot of places, then you can deform your contour as long as you are only passing points where your function is analytic. And that's the pr uh, principle of deformation of paths. You can take a more convenient contour to compute your contour integral. As we see in this example, we have a horrible contour C, and a function f of z equals 1 over z, which is analytic everywhere except at the origin. So, what we can we do? We can choose a different contour, another contour. We take instead a unit circle. So, we deform our strange contour to just a unit circle. And that's possible because our f is analytic everywhere uh, over there. And instead, we compute the integral of 1 over z along the unit circle. Well, I've done this countless times that integral equals 2 pi i. So that means that also our original integral equals 2 pi i. 
So this deformation of paths is a really useful property if you want to compute contour integrals.